just coming in home now after the day in the XL. We were at the Women of Silicon Roundabout conference and today was like the official launch of the scholarship. So um, they brought us to this event, which is like a conference for women in technology. And we got our little badges. And um, today of some uh, press coverage went out. We got a story in the Evening Standard. Colleen and Mary were on Sky News this morning. And um, we've been getting some contacts from like the Irish Times. And I was at, did a phone interview with her dad, I.E. Tomorrow I'm going to be doing a radio interview with Radio Nalifa because um, they asked, did either of myself or Mary speak Irish? and I have convinced myself that I can, um, so I'm going to spend tonight googling um, computing terms in Irish. And yeah, so they brought us to the conference and we got to go to some very cool talks. Um, I went to one called um, How to Get People to Listen to You, which um, was very funny and interesting and great. And yeah, so today like, I'm a shatter tired, we were up since like the wee hours. Um, but yeah, so today's like, it's really, 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 really real. And I'm trying to get that um, clip um, of Colleen and Mary on the news so I can show my parents because I haven't told them yet. So that's all exciting stuff. And yeah, so today it's like it's really, really happening. It's very, very real. So tonight uh, we went to myself and Ida are just back from Cub and Club, which is an organisation that um, has events once a month that are like big group meetups for women who work in game development here in London and it was so lovely. Um, we met women who are UX specialists. I spoke to a woman called Sophie Knowles who actually taught me 3D modeling at uh, uni. She did the animation and modeling module and I asked her a bunch of questions about like best practices for asset creation and artwork and um, just so friendly and so um, just a girl like the two hours that we were there just like flew past and we've gotten some good contacts or people we can tap for questions and things like that and, and for us like we're coming as real like new beginners and we're full of questions and, and everyone was so forthcoming and supportive um, with advice for us and, and saying like oh get in contact with me and I can give you a bit more information so it was absolutely lovely and looking forward to going to the next one again in July so we're lucky that we're here in the city and that there are these resources available for us so just delighted that we found this event and that they were just so lovely welcoming to us so tonight we were at are you filming yeah, yeah, yeah. sure yeah, yeah. what okay you'll go. Yeah, yeah it's there you go okay so tonight we were at yes. youtube we went to the youtube space because mm. there was like a um, vr it was Events. vr and ar and they gave thing. us these oh, yeah. youtube boxes full of youtube vr Full they're basically full the Google, of YouTube VR. They're the Google Cardboard, but they're like the YouTube branded one. So yeah. there were content creators. There was the guy who makes um, AR filters for Instagram. Mm -hmm. There was a woman called Rosie Summers who we spoke to afterwards, who is an artist who works with the Tilt Brush. And we were asking her questions about how does she make 3D assets because she says that she makes her animation assets um, in Tilt and then she can bring them into Unity. Um, uh, through like modeling them in Maya. Yeah. So we were asking her like, is that a good way of making game assets? And she said, probably not because they're super high poly, which means that they're really hard to process. And Massive. what else did we do? There was we lots met, of We meat. met this woman. Oh yeah, 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 Angela. Yeah. <laughs> Angela Kylie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can, you can follow her on Instagram. She's <laughs> lovely. She was such a lovely woman. And then she was like, oh, I make puppets. And I was like, what do you mean? And she makes I puppets, puppets for like Wes Anderson and, um, Crazy so she, she made Barry the Biscuit Boy, which I mean, like, okay, Isle of Dogs is like the legit thing, but Barry and the Coraline boy. And, and Coraline as well. Um, so yeah, we had a, a lovely chat with her, and and um, she, I think she's not a YouTuber herself, but I think she got there because like her work is like such a high standard. Yeah, she's amazing. But yeah, she was so nice to talk to, and yeah, it was just a very cool event and nice to I kind of see the the vibe and how people are using it because um, it seems like a really cool tool for like blocking things out and pre doing like yeah. pre they call it you know, these a lot for previs um which is when you are maybe making a film or an animation or even a game and you want to do like a, like a three-dimensional sketch to get a feeling of how that space is gonna look by the way it, this is so interesting <laughs> but did you notice that the three creators the three artists mm. were talking about it from a very artist perspective mm. but then the direct that woman i don't know what she was yeah, yeah yeah she mentioned something that made me realize like okay she's trying to 
think how can she capitalize this? Yes, like advertising yeah. and and also she was talking about like real estate and that you might want to visit like, like houses. visual a house and all this kind of stuff. And you can visit ten houses. But in that was weird for minutes. the audience because like the audience people were YouTube, really like, they were content ten creators. And I mean, yeah, that sort of thing. I mean, yeah, but it, it was very interesting to see like her very clear perspective of how can we monetize this? Yeah. How are we going to introduce this into advertising? And she was trying to like uh, like weave through all of their like segments with like a little bit of spiel on about the whole And thing. she mentioned this beauty campaign uh, by she totally I've seen for, uh, them like you know yeah. the, the like the the Kylie Kendall Jenner whatever it is like, you know, the film lipstick you can, yeah. and it you can try you can try the lipstick on very silly with might I AR, ask AR. Yeah, but you can kind of get the vibe of the color. I, 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 I think like it's something that like the idea is there, but like the execution hasn't been like polished yet. But yeah, so we're there. We got free drinks, which you didn't have. I got. I like, didn't drink my drinks. I got a little bit buzzed, and then I sobered up on the bus home. Uh, oh, and and yeah, but yeah, so that was what we just. Yeah. <laughs> okay, come on, explain, explain. So, today I am working on. Trying to build like build these little cards for all the papers that I'm working on, so that I can look at them quickly and be like, okay, all of these are about like how to conduct research with children. All of these are about like mental health games, and all of these are um, about just like game design and puzzle design and things like that. So I'm trying to like, organize them out. And at the same time, you are doing a little bit of character design research. Yes. I mean, I'm just creating different. Mm. It's just. Different ideas, mm -hmm. so I don't forget what it comes to my mind. I sketch it here first, and then I draw it with Photoshop. And I yeah. <laughs> it makes me stress. It makes me wonder. I should be more organized. I think organized. Yes. <laughs> Um, I mean, the cards are sort of the symbol of organization, but I just keep writing cards and I'm not actually doing anything. What's on the cards? So. Par with children and youth, review of methodology, and I just keep rewriting the definition for par over and over them. Um, so it just has like the like key ideas from each one of the papers and then that way you know like what Phoenix was saying that like you can cluster them together so that you're like okay from all the research that I've done it looks like um, tracking children's emotions while you do the workshop with them is really important to their output or like they talk about scaffolding a lot which is um, teaching them a bit of design principle and a bit of like mental health principle before you start so that they know what you're talking about um, so these are just ideas that keep coming up and again and again so when it goes to like writing the thesis Okay, so what's up? What's happening? Yeah. What ha we have been working like the last five hours. Yeah, we've we've been we've been cracking because we're going to France next week, so we're trying to like get some groundwork in before we head off. But I have in my hands the world's most boring card game, which is like a digest of about twenty six different papers that I've read, and I've got them all these little cards like, so I can start like. Mind so you have read twenty six like. 26 like like published like peer reviewed academic papers um, trying to get some background about what's the best way to start conducting our research mm -hmm. and um, security yeah oh security is gonna kick us up <laughs> try to get out the gates so yes so are you ready to start writing I think so I think so. I'm gonna just stop reading though because otherwise I'll just keep reading forever because um, you read one paper and then it's got like 20 good references and then you go and like read those references and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to stop it now, do a little bit of writing, and then if I'm missing anything, I can come back and read more, I think is the plan. Cool. So you are going to be writing while in France? On vacay, in theory. On the beach. Maybe not. I don't know. Yes. Are, are, we, are, we, are we being very optimistic, thinking that we're going to get work done? No, I think we are. I feel like working, I mean, because I like what I'm doing, so I feel like doing these. Yeah, yeah. Follow, it's good to follow your motivation. Yeah. I don't, I don't have anything to say. What were you doing today? I found a lot of research mm -hmm. on 2D video games, like watch out, <laughs> platformers <laughs> and mobile games that have art that I really enjoy visually. Like, mm -hmm. And I've also researched a lot about the most common mental conditions in children. Mm -hmm. 
and that was very interesting. Yeah, we're currently for character like, design. Yeah, yeah, we're trying to decide on what what's kind of going to be the content basis of these characters. Are we going to go for emotions? Are we going to go for um, learning differences? Are we going to go for mood disorders? So we're all factoring that in now. And later on, we're going to be having a conversation with some mental health professionals who will help us to decide what's the best kind of content we can make. In so the space hot. of the game. And it's summertime. And it's summertime out here in the field. We are here and I just packing up um, all of our underwear in, in the most militaristic style I've ever seen. Um, down here on the floor, like a gremlin trying to wrap up all of the research into some useful tidbits that we can work on while we're on vacation. This isn't a vacation for fun. This is a vacation to work. for working and so on and so forth. It is a vacation for fun. I don't know what I'm saying. I mean, this is, uh, I think maybe, I don't know, very wistful thinking, uh, hoping that we're going to get stuff done. But sure, look, what can we do? So what is this crazy mess? Food? I had all of my pens very nicely aligned and organized. I can see that. My Muji pens were there. You got me and the pens that Nicola bought me that I put into the washing machine by accident were there. And then my writing black pens were Okay, huge. I don't care about your pens. What is all this writing? I care about my pens. Okay, so all those little cards that I was working on, I've, I've grouped them into um, peer, participant, active research, um, serious educational games, mental health games, game design and playtesting, and narrative games. And then from those, I went and I started, because Ida and I have had like these kind of like, just from our own experience of playing games and our own kind of common sense, we had these kind of intuitions about what sort of framework we could use to play the game. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking all of those intuitions that we've had that I've come across in our research and kind of like listing those out, like having a customizable character because um, there's a lot of research to support the fact that like if a player can choose um, the avatar or customize the character that they're playing it gives them a much stronger emotional connection um, another paper I came across caring for an animal companion kids are really motivated um, if they have a little animal companion they need to pay for and care for in a game and if you can attach that to like the educational goal that's really useful um, intrinsic rewards versus extrinsic rewards the rewards in the game have to be tied into the gameplay and not just slapped on the top so just gathering all this stuff together and then the next bit is designing the workshops because a big part of this project is um, kind of having these workshops with kids from the age group we're making the game for and um, kind of teaching them a bit of game design teaching them a little bit of mental health and then using those workshops to get some information out of them in terms of what kind of games they like, what is their kind of understanding of mental health and factoring all of that into the game. Well done, you did a great job. <laughs> Thanks, Val. You did great. Apart from the pens, I need to show you how to organize them properly. What do you mean the pens? Like well, my they panties. Were, they were perfectly they're, they're folded. All, but look, it's, it's from the outside, they don't look the best but there is this there is a method to the madness and um, I, I I'm most proud of my subdivision between um, black writing pens and black mark making pens because